Hello and welcome to The Kim Iverson Show. Thank you so much for watching. So Friday, Silicon Valley Bank collapsed after widespread industry panic caused a run on the bank. Now try to put your disdain for Alita Silicon Valley sensor czars aside and let's take a look at the bigger picture of what's happening because it's incredibly frightening. Essentially, the government is seeking to gain greater control over big tech, which will ultimately mean greater control over us. Now, we've seen what was revealed in the Twitter files, how the government infiltrated the big tech platform to censor Americans. We've seen how rollouts of things like ESG scores are being used to force companies to comply with a certain agenda or else. Now, the government seizures of Silicon Valley Bank and subsequently the Signature Bank of New York should set off loud, blaring alarm bells. Over 90% of tech startups bank with Silicon Valley Bank. And interestingly, Coinbase, the largest crypto exchange in the U.S., just announced mere days ago its move to Signature Bank of New York. And then the government seized it. You want to control someone? Control their money. And do you know what the government blatantly states they want to do? Control big tech and control crypto. Coincidence? It's important to understand that Silicon Valley Bank was not insolvent. It was illiquid. There's a difference. Illiquid means it couldn't come up with the cash customers demanded at that very moment. And the reason they couldn't was because suddenly about 20 to 25 percent of the money the bank managed was being demanded by customers all at once. Now, no bank in America could handle that sort of demand. Any bank would go under in the event of a run of that magnitude. Unlike the banks in the 2008 crash, SVB didn't invest in risky assets or make bad loans with its customers' money. It actually did one of the least risky and supposedly safest things you could do with excess customer cash. It bought treasury bonds. Treasury bonds are guaranteed if you wait till maturity. Now, lots of banks hold bonds. In fact, the Fed recently encouraged banks to buy them rather than lend customer cash in order to get cash out of the system and into reserves in hopes it would reduce inflation. So many banks bought bonds. The Fed encouraged them by giving those banks who did what the Fed asked favorable status. Don't make loans or investments with customer deposits. That would just inject money into the system, causing further inflation. Instead, buy bonds so that the money is tied up somewhere else which would then reduce inflation. Well, it tied up the money, all right. On top of giving the Fed their customers money at the behest of the Fed, the Fed then raised interest rates rapidly. That meant that those bonds were no longer worth what the banks paid for them. Now, that's one way to discourage a bank from coming along and cashing them out. Suddenly, Silicon Valley Bank needed that money back, but the bonds the Fed sold them were now worth less because the Fed devalued them. And the run got started because billionaire investor Peter Thiel saw the bank was over leveraged in bonds and called companies in his portfolio to strongly suggest that they bail out and bail out fast. Now, the bank actually would have been OK if the run hadn't happened or if the Fed actually did what the Fed was supposedly created to do, which is help prevent bank runs by injecting liquidity into a solvent bank when too many customers are demanding too much money all at once. The Fed injects liquidity into solvent banks all the time to help them out when needed. One would question that we should be one one question we should be asking is why didn't the Fed do it for this solvent bank this time? Why did the Fed let this solvent bank fail? Again, it wasn't because this bank made risky investments or bad loans. This bank bought bonds, lots of them, from the Fed. Now the Fed has the power to pick and choose when to help a bank and when to let it fail. And this was a bank with good assets and great clients. In fact, the biggest banks, the very banks who are the shareholders of the Federal Reserve, coveted the clients of SBB for a very long time and wanted nothing more but to gain Silicon Valley's business. And now they can because Silicon Valley Bank is gone. Now there will be further consolidation of smaller banks into the larger ones, making it all that much easier to roll out a central bank digital currency and social credit score for us all. Again, you want to control someone, control their money. And that's ultimately the end goal. So yes, what I'm telling you is the wiping out of Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank of New York look more like controlled demolitions than banks that went under for making bad investments, investments in U.S. Treasury bonds. What are they saying about those bonds? Now, I get it. We don't want to bail out banks, and insolvent banks should absolutely go under. And if bad actors are involved, they should go to jail. But let me assure you, this wasn't a bailout, nor would it have been if the Fed had just stepped in and prevented the run. Taxpayer money has nothing to do with this, nor will any of that cause inflation. 
That talk is just distraction from what's really happening. The consolidation of smaller banks into the bigger ones, attempting to force the most powerful and threatening entities like tech and crypto into banks under the thumb of those ushering in a very specific global agenda. And in turn, if you can control tech and control crypto, you can control the people. The Federal Reserve is a profitable private bank. Without printing new money or going to Congress for cash, it can buy and sell assets such as bonds from banks and it can lend its money out at any time. It has the power to inject liquidity into these two banks without creating any new dollars. It just chose not to. Instead, they chose to let the banks fail but kept their valuable clients afloat. Again, why? Because they want to move those clients. Where? To the bigger banks. Why? Because if everyone, especially the power players, are in the biggest banks, they can better easily be managed. This isn't about wealthy Silicon Valley liberals getting bailed out by the middle class taxpayer. This is another attempt to control big tech and crypto. There was another way. The Fed chose not to do it. They also know everybody would get lost and talk about bailouts and liberal elites. The optics of bailing out Silicon Valley Bank would be horrific. No one would want that. But they didn't want to, and they didn't. That wasn't the plan. Now, you can bet small banks are going to go under one by one with assets and accounts to be absorbed by the biggest banks you just wait. They're just going to do it systematically rather than through chaotic runs. The goal is to consolidate all the banks into the hands of a few, making it much easier to enforce ESG scores and create a central bank digital currency. And when that happens, they gain a lot more power, especially if they're controlling big tech and crypto. And that is the goal.